Good afternoon YouTube. Today I'm at Changi Airport and we will be flying to Bali with KLM's business class. When I checked in online it looked like it was the newer Boeing 777. So we're gonna find out and I'm joined with Lynn. So we're gonna head into the airport now, get checked in and check out the lounge. Let's go. We spent two days in Singapore and it was amazing. Lots to see and do, but the number one thing you can't miss is Changi Airport. And this is the airport of airports. You've got a massive shopping mall, plenty of attractions, and of course the iconic dual fountains. And you can easily spend hours here. So I'd recommend arriving well ahead of time. And another good thing about the airport is there's plenty of bag storage points so you don't need to carry your luggage around. Whilst you're here, make sure to hit the subscribe button as I've got a lot more travel content coming up. Okay, let's head to the check-in desk. So we've just checked in and they gave us a physical boarding pass and I think KLM share their lounge with Qantas. So we're on our way to the Qantas business class lounge and we will be flying on the Boeing 777-300ER and this is actually a transit flight from Amsterdam to Bali. So let's go check out the lounge. I'll cut straight to it. How much did this ticket cost us? Well, we paid with air miles and 25,000 to be exact per person. We also had to pay the tax, which was around 25 pounds each. So the cash value of this ticket would have been around 300 pounds one way. Um, so 600 pounds in total. So I think we got a pretty decent value considering, you know, the air miles, I guess, pays for itself. And we just had to cover the tax. And just like that, we were through security check-in and into the main Terminal 2 of Changi Airport. This, of course, isn't as exciting as Terminal 1, which has the fountain, but you've got lots of shops and you have really nice views of the runway. And in Terminal 2, you'll find more low-cost carrier airlines, which are flying to different parts of Southeast Asia. But I think my coolest observation was the robot, which was moving around the airport, taking deliveries. We're just about to head into the uh, Qantas lounge. Okay, so we were told to head to the Qantas lounge. Now, I think what they didn't tell us is there's two Qantas lounges and we weren't invited into the first lounge. We actually went to the wrong lounge to begin with. It was the Qantas first lounge that we were at when we needed to be at the Qantas International Business Lounge. So we've walked a little bit further away. I think that's it at the end. Hi. Thank you. Yeah. So, can I both your passport? Yeah, sure. Bali, yeah. So, the KLM International Business Lounge is really empty today. As you can see, plenty of seats available, but I'm going to go get some food and walk you through today's flight. Our flight was about to leave without us, but Ike has a real dilemma. He's got a beer, a whole pint. Ike, you're going to have to chug it. <laughs> left, left. Yes, yes. Thank, you. thank you. My first impressions stepping on board were really pleasant. I love the classic blue KLM theme across the cabin. It made me feel really relaxed and the cabin crew do a great job in relaxing you even further by bringing around some orange juice. I was expecting sparkling wine, but my guess would be maybe due to local regulations, they couldn't serve alcohol while still on the ground, but fine, orange juice it is. The KLM Boeing 777-300ER features a 121 seat configuration, giving each seat direct aisle access, 
and today Lynn and I were sat up front in seats 1D and 1G. In business class you'll find 34 seats, 40 in premium economy and 334 in economy. The KLM seat offers a generous amount of space similar to what you would find with their competitors on the 777. There's a nice bit of two tier storage under the screen which could easily fit a backpack and there shouldn't be any issues if you're tall as there's plenty of leg room in the seated position. I think a really cool feature with this seat is the display. I couldn't tell if it was 4K or 1080p but the colours were really vivid and the monitor was highly responsive and in my opinion it trumps the BA screen on the new 777. Just below the monitor you have your 3 pin power socket along with a standard USB and iPhone lightning charging port and along the edge of the seat there's this touchscreen panel which can control the positioning of your seat and a very handy do not disturb button and interestingly a massage button. On the seat they have a massage button although it doesn't really give you a great massage. The dining tray I found to be quite small, however it tucked away quite easily and was very compact. To my left I had this small but very bright reading light and of course more storage, this time housing your KLM headphones and a small vanity mirror. The armrest to my right was height adjustable, I found myself keeping it in the highest position throughout the flight as it was really comfortable to lean on. The first thing you'll notice with this new KLM seat is the addition of the sliding door. Although it felt slightly flimsy, it actually gave me more the impression of a divider rather than a sturdy door similar to what you would find on Qatar's Q-Suite for example or even the new British Airways 777. However, having that door adds another layer of privacy I guess so it's nice to have. It was very easy to switch the seat from its upright position to the lie flat bed. You simply hold this button and in a few seconds you have a bed ready to sleep on. However, we weren't provided with any mattress toppers which was a shame. After around 30 minutes, the cabin crew began serving dinner and taking into consideration the fact this flight is technically part of a crossover from Amsterdam over to Bali, I thought there would be more options for food. I definitely thought there would be more than two options for the mains, but today we had the choice of either ravioli or beef. I went with the beef and since Lynn is vegan, she couldn't have either. And I was pretty surprised with the lack of options. Again, this is a short flight, so I'm guessing the menu's been significantly reduced. No dinner for Lynn, straight to bed. As you can see, this is the very standard looking bathroom. I think the nice touches are the flower they've included. You've got some hair gel and some body lotion. And you've got this really nice lighting above the mirror, which I think does a pretty decent job of adding light to the bathroom. I can't forget this big mirror, which is a full size mirror as you come into the bathroom. And just like that, we begin making our descent into Bali Denpasar Airport, ready to embark on our two week holiday in Indonesia. I think there's a lot of positives to take away from KLM's new business class, and I would absolutely fly with them again in business. I'd be actually more keen to see how their service and its offerings differ on a long haul flight. But overall, I'm still very grateful to fly in business on such a short flight. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. And well, if you are already subscribed, well, thank you for sticking around. I can't wait to bring you all some more new exciting content. I'll see you all in the next video.